Hello Gecko fans, this is Wally from Supreme Gecko and today we have a special look in at a very special gecko. This is Coleonyx Brevis, the Texas Banded Gecko. I've been looking for this gecko for a long, long time. I picked up a trio last year and I'm very, very pleased with the colors on this gecko. We're going to go ahead and check out their setup. We'll look at the geckos themselves. We'll talk about how to best maintain these geckos. We're going to even check for some eggs. We might see a baby, but most of all, stick around until the end to see how I avert disaster with these geckos. There's just so many ways you can maintain these geckos, but this is the way I do it. This is a 15 quart tub. I have plenty of hides in here. I have a water dish, a food dish. We feed a variety of foods, including mealworms and dubias but lots and lots of places for these geckos to hide. In these geckos over about a half of an inch of sand, never had an issue. I'm running FlexWatt under this tub for heat. We maintain heat around 90 to 94 degrees, and the rest of the tub is an ambient 75. For the Texas Banded Gecko, and I'll show a picture of their distribution in Texas, this gecko is used to heat and it's used to a very hard, dry area. Here you can see the absolute beauty of these little geckos. And we'll see more pictures of these geckos a little bit later in the video. But again, they live in southern Texas, so they're used to very arid situations. That's why we're providing a lot of hides for this enclosure. You just saw the male, the yellow colored uh, animal. Here we see a female hiding under one of the hides on the warmer side of the enclosure. And you can see that they really don't like to be disturbed. As you can see, these animals have a variety of different colors. This male is beautiful yellow. The female has just lots and lots of spots. And I got my trio from Austin Reptile Connections. Great people to work with. I just threw in a, a mealworm. I don't usually do this over the sand, but I wanted to see if we could get a feeding response from this gecko. It would be a surprise if this gecko took this mealworm because they are so shy, but here we see it approaching the mealworm and taking it. Mealworm's a little bit big, they're a little bit shy, so it's going to leave the mealworm alone. And we're going to go ahead and check under that next hide to see if we can find the third one, and there she is. And there's two little eggs. I'm so pleased with this. Now I've gotten eggs from this gecko before and we'll talk a little bit about that later, but you can see this is a beautiful, beautiful female. Two eggs and uh oh, I think there's an issue with those eggs. Coleonyx brevis females like to burrow down into the sand to bury their eggs. So to find two eggs on the surface is very, very unusual. Now I just placed this trio in this tub from another tub, so I really didn't expect much breeding activity. And here we can see this egg is dented in. Not a good egg. This egg really should be P-shaped, very round, so I'll go ahead and dispose of that egg. Let's check out the other egg, but it looks bad as well. Same situation, I'll dispose of this egg as well. One little trick that I like to do with any animals that bury their eggs in the sand is to moisten under that hide to keep that area a little bit wetter than the surrounding area and they'll lay their eggs in that area. I'm sifting through the sand here just to check to see if there's any more eggs and unfortunately we don't find any others. So let's replace the hide. And while I do that, I do want to mention that I do have a lot of information on the Supreme Gecko website. I'll throw a link down in the description so you can read more about these wonderful, wonderful animals. It's really been a lot of fun keeping these animals for the short amount of time that I've had them, and I'm really looking forward to keeping them for a long time in the future and seeing what we can produce. Like I said, I do have one baby, and we'll see that in just a minute as I finish putting all the decor back in this setup.
A few days after filming this video, disaster struck. I found that one of my Coleonics Brevis had wedged itself into a very, very small hole in this cork bark, and I was very worried that I would never, ever get this animal out. It took a lot of slow, gentle cuts to this wood to finally make a hole big enough for this Coleonix brevis to make its way out. You can see it really breathing heavy here, but in the end, everything was okay. Beautiful, beautiful animal. And gecko fans, if you get a chance to work with this animal, please grab that opportunity. They're so cool. Thank you, gecko fans, for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button, and we'll see you next video.